I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Ms. Sid, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, MP Version, for coming today. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, did you consider provincial and territory jurisdiction? Can the member uh, explain what en engagement uh, you did with the provinces and territories uh, on your present action plans in this regard? So I haven't put forward any recommendations or action plans at this point. Uh, in writing my motion, I said to respect uh, provincial and territorial jurisdiction. And I, and I realize that in Canada here, there's, when it comes to health, uh, that is a, a significant um, hurdle, I would say, uh, just because uh, we federally fund it, but it's provincial responsibility to lay out health. And so I guess at, at some point it's going to be your rec some of your recommendations are going to be recommendations for, for provinces, um, but we'll have no recourse in actually getting them implemented. That'll be up to the provinces as to whether they want to or not. I know it is an important issue, um, but uh, why do you view the Health Committee as the best way to study this? Um, there was a relatively a tight deadline for the later this year, considering all the other committee business in this committee, um, like uh, pharmacare, we all heard like 20% people cannot uh, take their medication because they cannot fulfill the prescription mm -hmm. and the organ and tissue uh, donation matter and indigenous health, uh, like these are very important. Your uh, is also issues very important, but why you think uh, this is the most important issue this time? Uh, well, I put this motion on notice what was it uh, on the day of the woman? It was March 8, 2015, and uh, I anticipated that it would have been passed uh, significantly earlier, uh, which would have given about a year for it to be have been studied. So there's that aspect of it as well. The other thing I would point out is is that um, this is a, this is an issue that affects every Canadian, and so I, I think that it's a it's imperative that we do study it. Um, I put a date on it so that it would get studied. Uh, that's that's probably the the date. Yeah, has has crept up on us for sure. But uh, I'm pl I'm pleased to be here and uh, and pleased to see that you're taking it on. Okay. Uh, and the other countries like China, if you noted that having very robust control on internet access, I think that is a, like a, just we all know about that. Do you think uh, we should pursue like that? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Something? Should we pursue China's internet? No, I don't think we no, should. No, I'm just to want your ideas, like uh, what you want, to, like uh, the federal government to do the to do that. So, so I've particularly put this in the in the health re region, um, specifically so that you can hear from health professionals on this, uh, hear from the latest academic research. Uh, ask their opinion on on what uh, what we should be doing. Um, a legislative uh, approach or a regulatory report approach will will be part of it, uh, but I don't see that as playing a major role in in shifting societal ideas and shifting the culture on this. That's that's probably going to be the biggest the biggest impact that we can have. And I heard you said the parents have some duties too. Uh, but the researchers we have seen so far has suggested that such material can have a negative impact on the ideas about uh, sexual consent, given that you have asked this committee to study this issue. What role do you see a government having regard to teaching consent, to giving consent? I, I think that that's a it's a broad, it's going to take a multifaceted approach to, to teaching consent. I think that there's two aspects of consent on, on this issue. There's number one, um, the, the, the violence perpetrated within the videos uh, totally destroys the concept of consent within relationships. But there's also the other aspect of consent is that when I uh, purchase the pack of cigarettes, um, I am informed as to the health effects of that, those cigarettes. I am informed that I may develop cancer, I may develop uh, mouth diseases, I may develop... Uh, they, they have the most awful pictures on the package of cigarettes. Um, with this 
there is no necessarily informed consent there's nobody saying hey if you consume this product these are the outcomes that could happen later on in life so that that would be a big aspect of the consent as well that I see I know that many of our young people if you ask them do you want to get married do you want to have a meaningful relationship later on in life that that's important to all of them and yet nobody's saying if you engage in these behaviors you limit your abilities to be able to participate in those kind of relationships someday in the future so there's that for that aspect of informed consent that I think is is really important and that I that I tasked the committee with with that as well I'm one guy and there's a whole host of people out there that have some good recommendations and I and I hope that we get to hear from them at this committee thank you mr. chairman much now